Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Rick Fry. <clears throat> my presentation this afternoon will be on, on packet manipulation with MicroTik firewalls. A little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in the IT and communication industries for about 20 years. Um, I worked on networks all over the, all over the world. Uh, I was first introduced to MicroTik back in 2008, um, and, I, and I fell in love with the product. Uh, I can't, can't say enough good things about MicroTik. Um, <clears throat> over the last eight, eight years, nine years, <clears throat> most of my, uh, my attention has been on ISPs, especially wireless ISPs, since those, uh, those industries have just been exploding. Um, and I'm also a MicroTik trainer. <clears throat> so there'll be uh, quite a few training opportunities this year uh, in Dallas, Atlanta, Phoenix, Omaha, uh, all, all around the country. <clears throat> There's still several um, I wasn't able to put on this list. So if you're interested in getting a, a, your MicroTik certification, you know, you feel free to come to talk to me after, afterwards. Um, also, we, we do online training. Um, no, that's not for MicroTik certification, but it's, it's online training of MicroTik. So if you're interested in learning uh, in, a, in a distance learning environment, you know, come talk to us about that as well. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit of information on, on what this presentation is. So, in, in, in one of my classes, I was, we were covering the, the firewall, uh, and I was explaining to them uh, how we use SourceNet or DestinationNet, we're rewriting part of the packet field. And one of the, one of the really ob obvious questions that I was asked was, how much of the packet can we, can we rewrite or, or manipulate? Um, so that's kind of the basis for, for this presentation. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the layer two frame, how much of that we can identify, uh, and rewrite, uh, as well as layer three packet. Um, th this presentation is is aimed at a beginner to intermediate audience. Um, just to let you know. Okay, and <clears throat> all of us at this point should be familiar with uh, the various networking models: the OSI model, the TCP model, um, and we'll be dealing primarily with uh, with frames at the layer two level and, and packets at the layer three level. So a little bit about our layer two frames. Um, <clears throat> first, anytime we, we, we transmit a packet from one, from one device on a network to another, you know, we electrically you know, you know, send, send a facsimile to the next device. Um, all of our information is contained within this layer two frame, and the layer two frame winds up being the first, the first piece of information that we can truly manipulate. Um, so there are a couple parts of, of the layer two frame that, that are present and that the router uses, but we can't really interact with at all, uh, such as uh, the preamble and the starter frame delimiter, as well as the, the frame sequence check uh, and, and the, inner, um, the inner frame gap. You know, those, those have to be there and the router needs them, but we can't see them, we can't do a packet capture on them, they're, they're just present. Um, but there are, there are five fields that we are interested in. Um, and, and there's four of these that, that we consider to be part of the, the layer two header. Uh, the first is the destination MAC address. And that's always the first thing that, that gets transmitted. Uh, second will be the, the source MAC address. And then if present, we'll also have uh, our VLAN tag information. Um, and then that's followed by <coughs> our ethernet type field uh, which is either our Ethernet type information or the length of, 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 of the frame. Um, and then following that is our payload. And of course, that will include our, our layer three packets <coughs> as well as our layer four segments um, and all the rest of the data that we're, that we're hoping to get in the end. Um, just, just FYI, the only thing that we, can, that we can do a packet capture on is this amount right here. Uh, and so that's, you know, conversely, that's, that's also going to be the only amount of information that we can um, that we can filter against in our firewall. Okay, so our layer two packets, we're going to want to filter against them uh, by using the bridge firewall. The filters <coughs> the filters are identical for both the filters tab and the NAT tab, so we'll only talk about the filters once because the only difference uh, will be the actions. Um, the first two fields was <coughs> the destination MAC address and the source MAC address. Um, 
and the firewall makes it very easy to match against those, those fields specifically. Uh, up here we have the source MAC and the destination MAC down here. Um, and then our, our, the next field is our, our VLAN tag information. Um, and there's three fields in Microtik that we can use to filter against this. Uh, the first will be our VLAN ID tag, our VLAN tag. Um, the next field will be our VLAN priority. Uh, and the third will be the encapsulation method, uh, which we probably won't use as much as the first two methods. Uh, but Our fourth field <coughs> is the Ethernet type or the Ethernet length field. Um, and and Microtech calls it the 802.3 SAP and the 802.3 type fields. And these work hand in hand to, with, with each other. So in this example, uh, this is these two fields together are trying to capture Apple Talk uh, traffic. Um, but if we want to capture something else, uh, we would use their hex value uh, in, in here to identify that traffic. Um, now we can't, <coughs> we, we can filter against this if, if there was some reason that we were trying to identify this traffic. Um, but we can't change this field. And, and really when you stop and think about it, this isn't a field that you would want to change. Okay, so let's, we, we talked about what we can filter. We only have four, four parts of that header that we're looking at. Um, we can filter for all, all four of those parts. But which, which parts can we change? <clears throat> in the filter actions, um, we can only change part of one field, and that's the, the priority. Um, and the only other option we can really do to, to, to change that packet is drop it. Um, so we have set priority down here in the filters. And, and then in, in NAT, <clears throat> we can use source NAT and destination NAT to rewrite the source and destination MAC address. So there's two of the four fields that we can rewrite completely. One, one field that we can rewrite partially. And of course, if we, if we want to add a VLAN tag or remove a VLAN tag, we can do that through our normal, our normal VLAN process. Um, and then the fourth field, which is our Ethernet type, we can, we can look at that, but we really can't do anything to rewrite it. Okay, so, so now let's take a look at the layer two payload, which is our layer three packet. Um, so to begin with, we have our, our source and destination ports. That's followed by the sequence number and the acknowledgement number. Um, after that, we have the header length, uh, a reserve field, and our code bits, which depending on how you learn the, the TCP header, uh, this will often be called your, your flag field. Um, we have the windowing size, followed by the checksum, and an urgent field. The urgent field really isn't used very often. Um, and then after that, we have our options. And the options kind of a neat field. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more. And, and, then, and then we have our data, our, our, our layer three payload. So that'll include our, our layer four segment and whatever data we're carrying. <coughs> so for this presentation, I, I chose a, a TCP packet. But there's lots of different types of packets out there. And so their fields will change a little bit, and, and, and that's okay, because the actions that we can take um, or are going to be the same regardless of what type of packet it is we're looking at. <clears throat> okay, so to, to begin with, now at, at this point we're we're at the uh, the layer three firewall. So we've got IP firewall, and we have filtering at and mango rules. Uh, and just like with our bridge firewall, the the filtering is is all identical. The only difference is the action taken. Um, so the first, the, the beginning of our packet is our, our source and destination ports, which we have three ways to, to filter against those. We can, we can choose the port uh, itself or we can choose any port. Um, the next three fields, <coughs> uh, we, can't, we can't filter against at all. So that's our sequence, our sequence number, act number, and the, the header length. Um, so there are some indirect things we can do to kind of look at that information but directly there's noth nothing we can do to, to filter it. And we also, we, th there's nothing we can do to change the information. Okay, now this is a TCP packet. <coughs> um, so the, ne the next field was our, our, um, our, our flag, our TCP flags. 
Um, and each one of those TCP flags, we, we can filter against. Um, so our send packet, our acknowledgement, our finish packet. Um, on the advanced tab, <coughs> we can choose the appropriate TCP flag uh, and, and find just those packets. Okay. The, the next three portions of that packet, um, once again, we're not able to, to filter against them. We can't make any changes to them. Um, you, you might argue about the windowing size and, and the urgent pointer fields. Might be kind of handy if we could rewrite those from the firewall, um, but we're not able to, to either filter or rewrite them. Um, and the options field. <coughs> so a lot of different packets have some sort of an options field. And this is, you know, this is a, you know, for anything else that hasn't, they haven't come up with at the time they, they created the protocol. Um, for TCP, there's been 45 standardized options over the years. 44 of those are not used by, by 99% of us. Um, about 40 of them have actually been, been rescinded over the years. Uh, and that leaves us with one that we do use all the time, and that's, that's MSS, or mac maximum segment size. Um, and of course, anytime we have MTU problems or, or, or we're working with something like a VPN and we know we're going to encounter an MTU issue, um, that field in, in particular is very, very useful to us. Okay, and the last is <coughs> the data field. And, and although there probably are more ways to to filter against the data inside the packet. Uh, the main thing that I want to point out is the content field. So this is a very, very powerful part of our firewall. Um, and, and the reason for that is the content field looks at the content of everything in the packet. It's not just any one section, it's not just any one, one piece. Anything that's in that packet can be filtered through this content window. Um, so that makes it very, very useful. If for some reason there, there was another, um, another part of the packet that we that we could saw, saw on our packet capture, um, and we were able to identify it, we could, we could use this field right here to capture that data. Um, very, very powerful. I rarely ever see this field used in a firewall rule. Um, but even, <coughs> uh, th this is one of the things you want to keep tucked in the back of your head. For example, uh, uh, Astra phones, you know, VOIP phones, they actually write Astra to each, each and every one of the packets. So if I want to capture that VoIP traffic, you know, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but I could also do it very simply by writing Astra up here in the content, and it would capture 100% of that VoIP traffic. So, um, okay, so, so let's talk about what actions we can take. We've we've talked about what we can what we can match against, but what actions can we actually take? In the filter section, there's really nothing. The closest we can come is is dropping the packet. Um, but there's actually not any one of those fields in particular that we can change. In the NAT section of the firewall, uh, we have five rules that will affect uh, that, that packet, that we can rewrite that packet with. Um, that source NAT, masquerade, NAT map, redirect, and destination map. All five of those will rewrite either the destination, source, uh, IP address, and or ports. Okay, and, and last is, is our mingle rule set. So this gives us the most flexibility. Um, I've, I've included some, a couple of these things in here which are actually uh, not really part of the layer three um, packet, but, but they're still, you know, frequently when we talk about a packet, we're talking about TCP, and we kind of blur that together with TCP IP, and, and, and layer three and four kind of run together. And, you know, we, we do that all the time, just out of just out, you know, laziness, I guess. But, so I've included all of these fields. So we can change the DSTP or the TOS. So for those of you who aren't familiar with that, that's differentiated services code point and type of service. So those are both uh, a part of the packet which determines its quality of service. Um, that way as a packet's tra you know, traversing uh, you know, your packet switch network, you know, everything knows you know, this, is, this is a high priority because it's VoIP or this is, this is a low priority, you know, it can wait. Um, we can actually change the MSS here with Mangle. Um, and, and anybody who's used a PPP-based tunnel has seen the MicroTik router automatically create these rules. Um, we can change the TTL or the time to live. Uh, and this can be very, very useful. Um, we don't 
<clears throat> hopefully we don't have to use this option very often, very frequently. But when we do need it, it's extremely, extremely valuable. Uh, you know, some, some ISPs, sometimes hotels, you, know, you, you go there and they'll change the, uh, the TTL to one so that you can't have a network behind, um, you know, behind whatever connected to that, uh, that Wi-Fi. Um, and that's, that's very, very annoying. So let's say, for example, I'm, I'm traveling with a MicroTik router, and that way I can have a layer two conduit back to my, back to my, my home network. Um, but I plug into my MicroTik router, it's online, but I can't get online. So I can find the TTL, and then I can rewrite the TTL so that you know, I don't have that stumbling block. Um, very, very useful. Clear DF. Um, <coughs> so this is kind of an interesting field. This is do not fragment. Um, so we can take it if, it, if it's set to do not fragment, we can take that positive and make it a negative. But we can't, we can't make it a positive again. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the priority, you set the priority, this, this applies to, uh, this actually applies to layer two priority. Um, and then we can strip all of the IP version four options. And now we can't choose one option, we can't choose the manner in which they're stripped, we just strip all of them. Um, so it's really, for, for most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, it's not particularly useful, but it is one way that we can affect the packets. Um, so in conclusion, if we want to directly manipulate a packet with a MicroTik router, there's, there's four fields in the layer two frame uh, that, that, that are visible to us and that we can, that we can filter against. 100% of them are, are filterable. 75% of those can be changed. Uh, with your layer three packets, <coughs> most of the fields that we would normally be interested in, in, uh, in filtering, we can. Um, it's, it's only the fields which, which are either auto-generated like, like the checksum um, or, or that wouldn't really have a, a good value for us that we can't filter against. Uh, unfortunately, it's really only a small number of those that we can, that we can change after it becomes a layer three packet. Um, okay, so that's, that's the end of the presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Um, what, what I was saying about the content field is it will look at anything in the packet um, and it will match against anything, you know, so it's like, for example, with the Astra phones, uh, when, when that packet leaves the phone, it leaves it with Astra written in each and every packet. Um, and, and frequently if you find, if you do a packet capture, especially on phones, uh, you, you can find little trademarks like that all the time and it's really, really handy. Um, so. Does anybody, anybody else have any questions? Okay. All right, well, I appreciate your time, and you know, enjoy the rest of the month.